This short presentation introduces the concept of risk sensitivities using components from the corresponding e-learning module found under Optimal MRM's online training service. Risk sensitivities can be used to measure an investment position's hypothetical profit or loss as a result of set changes in underlying market risk factors such as interest rates and prices. Sensitivities need not be restricted to trading books and can be useful to measure changes in economic value for non-trading activities such as mortgage books. Risk sensitivities do not use statistical confidence levels as with value at risk and stress scenario measurement. In order to manage their trading positions, Traders use sensitivities because they directly measure the profit or loss on a position. In using sensitivities to measure risk, risk managers can speak to frontline staff using a common language, and risk sensitivities can be used to estimate portfolio profit or loss based on actual changes in interest rates and prices. The market value of an investment is referred to as its mark to market which is dependent on the value of an underlying risk factor. Risk factors include interest rates, credit spreads, stocks, commodities, and foreign exchange prices. Lesser intuitive risk factors include implied volatility in time, as in the case of options whose mark-to-market is dependent on these factors. As individual risk factor values, prices and rates change so does the mark-to-market of an investment. Risk sensitivities measure the change in mark-to-market relative to changes in the value of corresponding underlying risk factors. The simplest and most commonly used risk sensitivities are known by the Greek symbols delta, gamma, vega, and theta. A general mathematical formula known as the Taylor series expansion presents a practical way to measure changes in mark-to-market using risk sensitivities. The general expression for the Taylor series expansion is as follows. We can rearrange the formula to provide f of x plus delta x minus f of x, which can represent the change in mark to market, or p &L, for an investment. For relatively simple investments, the first two terms of the Taylor series expansion are generally sufficient for estimating p &L. f prime of x refers to the first order derivatives such as delta, vega, and theta, and f double prime x refers to second order derivatives such as gamma. For fixed income investments, the profit or loss is equal to delta times the change in interest rates, where delta i is expressed in basis points, plus one half times gamma times the change in interest rates squared. For equities, commodities, and FX investments, the change in underlying risk factor prices, delta P, is expressed as a percentage price change and is used to estimate P&L using risk sensitivities. For options whose price is a function of implied volatility in time, in addition to price or rate, we can expand the P&L estimate equation using other first order Greeks such as vega and theta. With this equation, it is possible to estimate P&L for an investment position or an entire portfolio of positions. Risk practitioners can use this function as a reasonability check against official value at risk and stress scenario risk. Finance can also use this equation as a reasonability check against official profit and loss based on full revaluation. Directional delta risk sensitivity represents changes in mark to market or P&L as a function of directional changes in interest rates or percentage price changes in equity, commodity, and foreign exchange market. For interest rate instruments, delta equals the change in the mark to market divided by the change in interest rates, where delta MTM represents changes in the value of an investment position, and delta I represents basis point changes in underlying interest rates. For commodities, equities, and foreign exchange, Delta equals the change in mark to market divided by the change in price. And delta P represents the percentage price changes in underlying equity, commodity, and FX prices. Using the first expression of the Taylor series expansion, we start building an investment's profit or loss equation 
with a delta sensitivity expression. For interest rate products, PL is equal to negative DVO1 times delta I, where delta I represents the change in underlying interest rates expressed in basis points. For non interest rate products, PL is equal to delta times delta P, where delta P represents the change in the price of the underlying equity, commodity, or FX risk factor expressed as a percentage change. Gamma is defined as the rate of change in delta as a function of the price or rate level of the underlying instrument. Gamma is equal to the change in delta divided by the change in x, where change in x or delta x represents basis point changes in underlying interest rates and the percentage price changes in underlying commodities, equities, and FX instruments. Gamma is a second order Greek according to the Taylor series expansion. Second order Greeks are less intuitive because they describe a change in first order Greeks. One analogy for delta and gamma is speed and acceleration. Speed, or delta, measures the distance traveled, or profit and loss, for a certain amount of time, or change in rates. Acceleration, or gamma, measures the rate of change in speed, or delta, over time, or over a rate change. As prices rise, or rates fall, positive gamma, or the buying of optionality, favorably makes long positions progressively longer and reduces short positions. As prices fall, or rates rise, positive gamma also favorably reduces long positions and makes short positions progressively shorter. In the same volatile markets, as prices rise or rates fall, negative gamma, or the selling of optionality, adversely makes long positions progressively shorter and increases short positions. Conversely, as prices fall or rates rise, negative gamma also adversely makes long positions progressively longer and reduces short positions. The trade-off to being long or short gamma is time decay, which is known as theta. In the absence of volatility, investors in optionality, or long gamma, can expect to have their investment value decrease over time with a lesser chance of reaching the option strike level. Conversely, short gamma positions will gain time decay up to the option's expiration so long as market volatility remains subdued generating small enough gamma losses that do not offset gains from theta. We can add a gamma sensitivity expression using the Taylor series expansion in order to continue building the investment's P&L equation based on sensitivities. Volatility risk, or vega, represents the change in position mark to market in response to changes in implied volatility of interest rate, equity, commodity, and foreign exchange markets. For all asset classes, vega is equal to delta mark to market divided by delta v, where delta v represents the change in implied volatility of the underlying asset. As in the case of gamma, from a practical perspective, vega is mostly relevant to option instruments. We can add a Vega sensitivity expression using the Taylor series expansion in order to continue building the investment's P&L equation based on risk sensitivities. Like Delta, Vega is considered a first order Greek. For most products traded at financial organizations, higher order Greeks are not commonly required, except for a small proportion of specialized trades. In order to extend the P&L equation based on sensitivities, we can add a theta sensitivity expression for the change in the options price based on the passage of time.
Theta is equal to the change in the mark to market relative to delta t, where t equals one day. Optimal MRM invites you to visit its store online. To learn more about this and other available market risk e-learning modules,